Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a Monday show. I uh, hope you guys are ready to do some more coding today. Let's go ahead and get started with episode seven of the Twitter application series. In today's lesson, I'm gonna show you guys how to add a really, really nice looking navigation bar to our Twitter application. And it's going to look like this right here. So the similar is up with the application. And in the last video, we tackled dynamic cell sizing, which makes our app look like this but we have a, an empty navigation bar. In today's video, I'll show you how to add this navigation bar right here. Uh, you'll notice we have this Twitter icon here and a couple of buttons on the right, along with the add user button on the left. So really, really nice looking bar. And uh, today's techniques will kind of allow you to improve your application to have really, really nice buttons inside of a nav bar. So let's go ahead and get started by shrinking this guy up to the top. And uh, by the end of today's video, I think we're going to end up with some pretty messy code. So I'm gonna show you guys a really nice trick to kind of refactor our code to make our project a lot cleaner. Okay, so going uh, back to our Xcode editor right here, we have home data source controller. At the very top of view to load, I want to do something like this. I'm gonna call this function setup navigation bar items. And uh, let me just create this function down here. So a private function of that. Let's see, I need a func here. And I'm gonna print out one, two, three. So I'm gonna run this application now to verify that the uh, the code works and that we get print one, two, three inside of the console down below here. So we get our app, it's running, and we get uh, indeed one, two, three at the very bottom. So very good stuff. Now what do I want to do now is to drag in this little mock here, kind of as a reference uh, for what I wanna build. And the first thing I need are these icons right here in the nav bar. So let me open up assets right here. So we have our follow icon on the left and we need the three icons on the right here, which is this and uh, let's see, this compose and then this search guy right here. And let me just drag the finder out of the way. We have this, 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 and this. Okay, so things are looking pretty good. Uh, the first thing I need to do is to add in this little bird in the center of the nav bar which is pretty easy going back to set up navigation bar items. Let's do this here. Uh, see, navigation item dot title view needs to equal something, something right here. And this something will be let title image view equals UI image view with an image of title icon, which is that bird icon right there. So if I try to specify title image view like that, uh, it's going to look okay. However, the sizing for the bird might appear a little bit larger than we kind of want here. So that's a really, really, really large bird. To shrink these buttons down, you just need to specify some kind of frame for this guy. So CG rect of X of zero, zero and 34, 34 for width and height. Now that's going to change the sizing, but it's going to also uh, affect the aspect ratio of the bird. And what I mean is that the bird is going to be a little bit fatter than we want it to be. So to get the uh, bird to be a little bit skinnier, we'll say title image view dot content mode equals dot scale aspect fit. And run the app one more time. The bird's aspect ratio should be correct now that we have aspect fit on the content mode like that. So that looks pretty good. And let's now move on to the left button right there, the follow button or the add user button. And uh, following this little bit of code, let's say navigation item dot left bar button item equals UI bar button item. Of, I'm going to use this custom view constructor. So to specify one of these buttons right here, you need to specify a custom view that's going to be a UI button like this. So. Let's follow button right there equals UI button with a type of dot system like that. And follow button dot set image of this follow guy right here. This follow image with a control uh, control state of normal. Finally, I'll specify the follow button inside of my custom view. So I'll run the app now to see what we kind of get inside of our nav bar. All right, so our application is up and ready. And you notice how we don't really see the nav bar button on the left. And the reason is because we're missing a frame on this follow button. So frame of the same thing that we have here. So CG rect. And let me just paste that down there and try to run the app now to see if the follow button is going to show up on the left side. So app is up 
And there we go, we get this uh, add user button on the left. However, if you notice the coloring of this is a little bit off, so I'm going to go back to the follow and specify something called a rendering mode, it's a dot rendering mode of always original. So this will maintain the, uh, the coloring and the original state of the image that you specify inside of the button, which looks like that right there. So good stuff. Now that we have the title view and the left bar button done, let's specify the search and the compose button on the right side. So moving along here, um, let's say, let's see what do we want to do here. Let search button equals UI button right here. I'm going to specify a type of dot system. So this is exactly what we have up here. It's going to look pretty much the same. Search button, uh, set image. Let's see, search, I think that image is called with rendering mode of original. And then control state is going to be normal, just like what we have up top. And a search button, let's see, dot frame equals, see this frame guy right here, uh, equals frame. And then finally, we'll say navigation item dot right bar button item equals, uh, let's see, what do we have here? UI bar button item custom view like that and search button like so. So that's going to give me one button for the top right. And it's going to include that little magnifying glass uh, as that button image. And uh, that's what we get right there. So that is quite nice. Uh, now, what do I need to do? So in order to specify two buttons on the right side, you have to specify right bar button items instead of the singular value like that. So it looks like this right here, nav item dot right bar button items equals some kind of array. And this needs to be this button right here. So let me just cut that and paste it in there. And we should be okay. So let's see, let's get rid of this guy. Doesn't look right. And I try to run the application now. So get the spacing correctly. And running this code right here, we get our app to look just like what we had before, like that. So that's quite good. And uh, to specify the other button, this compose button right here, I will create or just copy and paste all of this guy right here and paste that down here. Let me just say compose button instead, compose button here and here. And for this, I'll say compose for the image. And now we have the exact same version of the button, but with a different image on it. Okay, so now that I have my compose button, let me just include that inside of the right bar buttons array, which it looks like here. Let me just specify a comma and UI bar button item of this custom view guy to be the compose button like so. And let me get the spacing a little bit more correct here and run the application. We should now see two buttons in the top right corner. And uh, our application is almost up and ready. Let's see what we get. So notice how the buttons are flipped around like that. And uh, it's kind of counterintuitive, but this array right here, it kind of goes left to right instead of right to left. So let me just do that and paste the second button inside of the first slot instead. So giving the array of those two buttons instead will render out the compose button on the right and then the search button on the left. So pretty good stuff and pretty easy, right? Now, the next thing I want to do is to kind of fix the background color of this navigation bar so that it doesn't have this translucency and it also should have a pure white color. So to do that, I will go all the way to the bottom of this setup function here and just say navigation, the navigation controller dot nav bar uh, background color equals dot white. I'm trying to run this. You actually do not get a fully white color. And uh, the reason is because the navigation bar comes with a default translucency value, which kind of gives it a lighter color right now. And so to change it to a full white, let's specify navigation bar dot is translucent equals false. So once I run that, you can see that uh, the navigation bar is going to be fully white which it looks like this right here. So it's fully white, doesn't have a hint of gray. So that is quite, quite good. All right, now that we have this uh, setup function all typed out, you notice that it looks kind of ugly is what I would 
characterize it as, uh, first of all, it contains a lot of setup functions. And if I were to come back and to take a look at what this is doing, I wouldn't be able to really, really easily uh, kind of parse it visually. So first I want to refactor this bit of code so that I can kind of set up everything in just a little bit of a easier way uh, by including a couple of uh, setup functions inside of this main setup one right here. So the first thing is to separate this chunk of setting up the right buttons into its own setup function. So private setup uh, right buttons right here. So your right buttons, that doesn't sound right. Set up right nav items like that. And we need to include a function right here. And I'm gonna copy all of, let's see, all of these guys, the search and the compose button and paste it in there. So that looks pretty good. I'll just call it right now, set it right nav items. And then for the follow button, let me just cut that and say uh, private uh, function set up left uh, nav item is going to set up the follow button. And calling that right here, we'll say it's set up left nav item. And then for here, I'm just going to say uh, set up, let's say set up remaining nav items, see nav items like that. I'm going to create this function right here, private function set up remaining uh, nav, whatever this is called. Let me just copy and paste that just to be a little bit clean with the code. I'm going to copy this in here like that and this in that function as well. So let's paste that in there and we'll just hit that and hit this and then hit this. So I'll run this application now just to verify that everything is still in working condition here. So what do we get now that we run? Well, the exact same application. And uh, one thing that you can do to further clean up your code is to include something called an extension uh, on home data source controller. So notice how all of this setup code uh, really deals with the nav bar. So let me just create this extension for the controller group right here. Uh, so with file, let's see, home data source controller. And I'm going to use a plus nav bar for kind of my extension file, which kind of looks like this right here. So that's a very old Objective-C convention. You can kind of give your extension whatever you want, but that's how I'm going to name it. So extension will be on home data source controller. And inside of here, I'm just going to copy all of that code that does the setup work. So all of that code, let me just cut that and paste it inside of this extension now. So if I try to run this, you'll notice that it doesn't exactly run due to uh, inaccessibility of this private function setup navigation bar items. So let me just take off the private right there and get the F back and try to run the application now. And we should be able to get everything that we need inside of our navigation bar. So running, running, and running, and here we go. We get all of the navigation bar items uh, and all of the setup function is kind of nicely tucked away inside. Okay, so that's going to be it for today's lesson. I really hope you were able to use some of these techniques to kind of improve your navigation bar inside of your applications to kind of look really, really nice. I uh, remember source code for today's project is available down below. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them down there as well. All right, and the next lesson, I'm gonna show you guys how to kind of render out the uh, tweet cells for the rest of our list there. So hopefully you guys stay tuned for that and uh, keep on coding. I'll see you next time. Bye guys.